Welcome to Sweet Tomato Vine Homestead. I'm Linda, and today I'm out in my garden, and it is looking much better as far as those little leaf-footed bugs are concerned. I do not see a lot of them flying around. I hope that this is, uh, you know, showing of things to come, that these bugs have vacated the premises, but I'm not sure. But I've been walking around, and so far I have not seen, I have not seen any. But, um... I just want to check out some things in the garden. I've been really busy to, today. I got up really early. I was able to uh, can some um, purple hull peas, which canning, I mean, froze. I uh, blanched them and uh, put them in uh, freezer bags and put them into the freezer. I uh, was able to, um, I had scored some tomatoes. I dropped them in uh, boiling hot water and uh, then after they had boiled for a few minutes, I took them out and put them in cold water and peel, peel the skins off and uh, drain them some. And then I put those in Ziploc bags, put them into the freezer. I was able to do, I only had two patty pan squashes. I was able to um, I slice them up, blanch those, put them in the freezer after shocking them in cold water. And I also uh, canned some tomatoes. I mean, not tomatoes, uh, okra. I uh, froze, froze some okra. And I think those are all the things that I was able to uh, put up today. I still have some uh, eggplant that I'm going to deal with. Y'all, I've never frozen eggplant. I see that you can freeze it. And uh, so I, I, I can't see blanching some eggplant and freezing it and then taking it out and it probably would be good for some recipes but i don't think it'd be good for the things that i usually use my eggplant for but i need to do something with my eggplant once i go back inside today but um i just wanted to uh share that with you all and also to uh show you all my uh plants that i potted the other day hold on i'm gonna show you all these are the seedlings that I started the other day. And uh, so far, I have some uh, cabbage that has germinated. A few of the bok choy has germinated. And the broccoli has germinated. So that was a really fast germination, y'all. So uh, I just wanted to let you all know that this is the perfect time to go ahead and get your um, seedlings started for fall because right now, we don't have to deal with the grow lights. We can go ahead, start them uh, out and put them out here in the heat. And the heat is going to help those seeds to germinate. So um, I just wanted to share that with you all. And I see some uh, things that I need to harvest. There's more eggplant, a uh, few tomatoes. And uh, we'll just harvest a few things as we uh, go and, and walk uh, through the garden. I'm going to be... Uh, watering some um, plants. I'm going to turn the water on on the in the east garden, and we're just going to check out some things. Okay, we'll get the water turned on to the east garden. Walk over there, make sure that everything's okay. Y'all, I have um, been still watering and fertilizing the east garden you know i'm doing it manually i'm gonna go ahead and over here i see that the water has uh came on the irrigation is working over here but yesterday i had an emergency and i was supposed to uh remove these plants and i did not get a chance to remove these plants over here in the east garden the plants that i told you all that were uh sick or had you know bug damage that were um i felt like they were not beneficial to the garden that they were only uh you know causing more uh pests to come to the garden so i still want to remove those i had an emergency and had to leave yesterday and everything's okay we're thankful everything turned out really 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 well and so i want to uh get this these plants removed so Let's do that.
Hey, this is a kohlrabi. I think it's at a good size. I'm gonna take it inside to see if it's tender. If it's tender, I'll use it. But if it's not, it'll go to the chickens. You wanna remove all the dead leaves that you can from your plants. I got my five gallon bucket out here to put my waste in. Just remove some leaves from a cabbage. No need in holding on to this any longer. It's a uh, broccoli plant. And we will be getting ready to replace it with new broccoli since we have new plants. really still looks good to me so I'm going to go ahead and leave it. I'm just going to remove the decaying leaves and, and keep this plant. Removing some uh, decaying leaves from this uh, parsley plant.
Okay, that was a lot of uh, dead cabbage leaves. The outside leaves were dying, so I just removed some of those. But now, I'm gonna take y'all back down in these watermelons again. I just wanted to check on them because the other day I put some more fertilizer on them. So I just wanted to see how they are doing. So there's one. So I can also be documenting this for myself. So I can go back and look. And then, you know, next year, if I want to see how my watermelons progress, I can go back and check this footage of the watermelons. So I think that is all of the ones that I have right here. It'd be nice if I could get over in there and clean that up some. I don't think that's gonna happen. Let's see where that um, pumpkin is. There's a green and white pumpkin in there somewhere. Let's see if we can find it. I don't see it. I know it's in here. And there is, uh, there are two, two white pumpkins in there. Yeah, right there, y'all can see them. There are two, two white pumpkins. See another white pumpkin over there. And I told you all, it's kind of hard for me to tell the difference in these white pumpkins and the um, patty pan, because the patty pan, that's what they look like, patty pan, but there is a slight difference in the appearance of them. So, oh, there it is. There is the green pumpkin. See that green pumpkin in there? I think they're so cute. If you all wonder what I'm going to do with those pumpkins, I'm going to store them and eat them if they, uh, you know, come to size and everything. Okay, there is one of those uh, Black diamond, watermelon. And I wanted to get footage of this because the other day I had more footage and I ended up losing my footage on some of it because it was the uh, operator. Didn't know what she was doing. I was trying to um, get it off of slow motion because some way my phone had went to slow motion when I tried to get it off. Uh-oh, I see some problems over here. I see a watermelon that I'm going to have to remove because it will only cause pests to come to the garden. Mm -mm -mm. But, uh, yeah, I was trying to get it off of slow motion. I ended up deleting it some kind of way, y'all. So, I did not have the footage of these watermelons on one of my previous videos that I was trying to show the watermelons on. But there's one. And there is one. And here is the one that has the damage on it. Y'all see it? Let me check it out. What caused that? We're going to get it out. It has some rot on the end, so we're just going to get that out. Okay, now we can continue down here to see what else is going on. That's why you have to come out to your garden. You have to look at things. You have to check things out because you don't want to have a piece of rotten fruit just laying there, just uh, causing all sorts of pests to come to your garden, looking for an easy snack. There is a honeydew melon over there. And there's another one. See, I've been missing this one. There's another honeydew. So hopefully they'll get a chance to get uh, right. I would like it if it would rain again so it could go ahead and, because the rain is much different than the 
watering that you put on. But it will also help wash my fertilizer in better. But I guess I just have to drag that hose out over here because that, see that fertilizer is not gonna get washed in really good with this uh, irrigation. I need that uh, water to just, you know, get on it and wash this stuff in really good. But um, I wanna go a little bit further. I don't seem like there's very much happening in that bed. Those are my, um, What's in that bed? Uh, cantaloupe. Cantaloupes is in this side, I think, and then this side are more supposedly pumpkins, but this bed here is where I've been getting those uh, patty pan squashes. So let me look over there and see if there are more patty pans. Wow, there looks like there's a big one in there. It's getting big. I need to get that out because Patty pans are something for me. I do not want my patty pan to get big. I don't want no huge patty pan. Now back there, those, that's a pumpkin. That's a pumpkin. It looks different from what I am about to uh, get right now. But I need to go ahead and I need to get this patty pan off. After I make sure that there's nothing in this area. So I'm gonna have to stick my hand in there so one minute okay so i got the patty pan that's a perfect size i think i'm gonna eat it today since i just canned some i think i'm gonna go ahead and eat this one i see a few cucumbers in here that i'm gonna go ahead and get they are very tiny and spiky and i am going to go ahead and get them and i'm going to cut them up and put them in a salad today Y'all, I am still holding out for some cucumbers to pickle, but these are going to go in my salad. I'm going to make a big salad. It lasts a couple days, and these will go perfect in there. Y'all didn't plant any of those uh, market more, any of those cucumbers this year, because last year, those were so prolific that I could not keep up with the eating of them. And then I tried to pickle them because someone said they made good pickles. Y'all, those pickles are in there soft, and we do not like soft. The flavor is uh, delicious, but we don't like soft pickles. We're, uh, you know, still using them. I'll use them as relish or something like that. But uh, they're just not getting eaten. So I want to use the Boston pickling to make my pickles. I think that is all the cucumbers that I have. So go ahead and take those. Let's see one more. It's tiny, but I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get it. And maybe that'll encourage this plant to go ahead and make some more cucumbers. And these chives have gotten overgrown again too, so I'll probably come back and get me some of these chives so I can have some potatoes and uh, put some chives on those. And I also have a dehydrator full of basil and oregano that I need to go ahead and put in the jar. So yeah, I need to get that. I'm glad I looked at the chives and that reminded me that I need to get those off of the dehydrator. We're going to go ahead and harvest some peppers out of this bed. Tomato. I'm going to take the time to harvest some okra.
Okay, this is the okra that we had today. I'm gonna harvest the red peppers off of this plant. little cute red it's got a red spot on it bell pepper it's not completely red yet you get one of those maybe two they look real pretty i was planning on saving those for when i make my green tomato relish but i'm gonna go ahead and get two i'm gonna get some cherry tomatoes off of this plant and i do see some of those leaf footed bugs on this plant so these bugs are using this plant as the host plant evidently now there was like four that flew off but um i don't plan on having a host plant so i'm gonna um harvest these off and i am going to consider removing this plant this plant has been so prolific and as you all can see those are perfect tomatoes they're not, there's no harm has been done to these tomatoes by these bugs. So it's going to be harder for me to uh, remove this here. So I don't know. That's a leaf. Kind of scared me. But um, it's hard to remove this plant because it's so prolific. There, the leaves on it are dying back. But the uh, plant itself is still producing so well and the fruit is not damaged. So if the fruit was damaged and uh, all spotted and the bugs had, you know, got the fruit where it looked bad and, you know, wasn't edible, then I would go ahead and I would pull this plant out. But at this point, y'all, I cannot pull this plant. I, like I said, I will consider it, it I just keep an eye on it. So it's gonna be honest, I cannot, part with this plant right now. These are the um, sangos, and y'all, they are so sweet. They are like candy, and I wouldn't blame those leaf foot bugs if they were on this, but there is no damage to this plant. So. The plant stays, y'all. I'll come back later and get some of these branches off of it. Maybe in the evening when it's cooler, that's making it look bad. But right now, it's going to, I'm almost to get them. I don't like the way these uh, dead branches, the leaves look on here. That looks better already. Okay, so we'll just move on. I'm gonna go ahead and get some of the eggplant off of this plant. This plant is still loaded with eggplant. I'm just gonna take this one off. Blushing. Trying to see if there are some um, ground cherries on this plant, but there are none. So it's, that one's blushing, but I'm going to leave it. There's a tomato way back in here that I can get that one. Let's 
see another one over there that I can get. I'll get way back in there. Get those two. Y'all not gonna believe what I see this morning. Y'all know it's only been like a couple of days since I was able to harvest some asparagus out of this bed. Okay, let me see what's in this ground here. Let me, this is a ground, oh, that one's, I don't know, that's, that's just small. But y'all look, let me move the grass and weed out the way first. Let me pull it on out, come on out, weed. Not alone. I see another one back in there. Can y'all see it? There's more. There's back in there. Okay, y'all. Y'all know this one gotta go. I just break it where it pops it. Where's the camera? There it is, right there. Y'all know what's about to happen. I'm about to eat this, so. Bon appetit. Yeah, this one going too. Mmm, it's delicious. Okay, there's a couple back in here that I want to get. They are blushing. So I'll take them in the house and let them continue to ripen in the house. Grab a few of these peppers that are close to the top. I don't want to reach deep in there today. I can always come back and get some later. I'm going to get some of these jalapeno peppers too. I got to figure out me a recipe to make some jalapeno poppers where I can make my own cheese because I can't trust the vegan cheese because it's too salty. Y'all know a good not uh, sodium free, I mean, we have sodium free vegan cheese. Let me know. I'll keep my eye out. I haven't really gotten a chance to go many places. Walmart let me down on the cheese. Now, I heard that if I can get to Trader Joe's, I can find it, but Trader Joe's is a nice ways away from me, so I don't think I'll be getting to Trader Joe's anytime soon. But, uh, yeah, some of these stores start need to start carrying some of this good stuff. I know they probably only carry stuff that they think they'll sell. And uh, I, think, I think a lot of people like that salt that's in the food. So they, they're carrying those salty brands of food. But, um, some of us like some stuff that's not loaded with salt. And so uh, I'll get the word out that we need some stuff, too. We need something that's low sodium that we can enjoy. Or either we just gonna have to find some recipes and you know make up our own stuff. So that's what I'm gonna be doing. I'm gonna try to figure out a recipe so that I can make me some jalapeno poppers that are low sodium with something that is similar to cheese. I know that there's some stuff that you can make with cashews, so I just gotta get in there and you know take a day to uh, sit down and try to figure it out see what I can come up with. I'll use some raw cashews to make me some cheese-like substance so I can stuff my jalapenos with. Give me some nutritional yeast in there. And... Oh, y'all, I made a breakfast patty. And y'all, I know this is not gonna sound good to some of you all. But I enjoyed it. It was a breakfast patty, and the recipes are all over the internet. And you can make your own breakfast patty. This recipe was started in one of the world wars when they didn't have a lot of uh, protein. And they made their protein patties with oatmeal. So I started with the oatmeal. I added some pecans some uh, chopped mushrooms, and a lot of spices like um, red pepper flakes, sage, thyme, 
and added some liquid smoke, paprika, and combined it all. I did it in my blender, and oh, I used flax egg as a binder, and I patted it into patties, and I uh, froze them first, and then when I get ready to use them, I just go back and I uh, put them in a, a non-stick pan and cook them. And uh, they're very satisfying to me. And I can have them for breakfast with some um, mung bean egg or something like that. And uh, it's, as I said, very satisfying. So that was just a recipe if anyone who's vegan and you know want to try something like that, then the recipes are all over the internet. There are different varieties. You can use walnuts, you can uh, eliminate the um, oatmeal, I think. I think you can take the oatmeal out, but that's just something I thought I would share with you all. Now I saw something red in here. Looked like a really red pepper. Y'all, I just stuck my hand way in there for a tomato. Okay, I saw something really red over here. And I want to get it, but I don't see it anymore. I mean, it was really, really bright red. And I know it had to have been a pepper, but I do not see it, so. And I did not bring my shovel. I cannot believe I don't have my shovel with me. Okay, so this is our harvest for today. We got okra, cucumbers, peppers, got a patty pan squash, and we have some tomatoes, an eggplant, and we also harvested some asparagus that I ate in the garden. I hope that you all enjoyed this video. I hope that you will give the video a thumbs up. I hope that you will subscribe to my channel if you have not already subscribed. Go ahead and hit the notification bell so that you will be notified whenever I upload a new video. And as always, thank you all for watching and I'll see y'all in the next video.